Welcome to the Raps interview studio at the Indiegogo Lounge. Uh, we are here with the team behind Cronies, director, writer-director Michael Larnell, uh, producer Spike Lee, and stars George Sample III, Zurich Buckner, and Brian Kowalski. Guys, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kowalski. Yeah. Kowalski. All right, we'll, s we'll start with Michael, because I thought this was really, um, it's your first feature, right? Yes. It's a terrific yes. debut. Uh, tell me about the genesis of this project and where the idea came from. Once again, like, so I, I, I set the film in St. Louis, Missouri. That's my hometown, so I wanted to start there. One, one second. Guys, is his mic loud enough? It's not on. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't want people to hear Michael. Yeah, right. So Man's I'm got something to say. Go Continue, please. So then after I uh, staged it in St. Louis, Missouri, I just, w I just uh, found some different characters who I liked, and I just wanted to craft this world with these this friends. Yeah. And from there, I just developed characters and wanted to like create an atmosphere where one friend is going left, the other friend is going right, and they don't know if they're going to uh, survive past this day. So it's a buddy flick, emotional journey over the course of a day. Type okay. Of Spike, how did you get involved with this project? Well, <laughs> I'm a professor for the last 15 years at the NYU Graduate Film School. And Michael is one of my students, and this is his thesis film. Okay. So, I mean, I, I take it you don't uh, get involved with all of your students' projects, though, right? Everybody doesn't make a film like this. <laughs> okay. That, that's a high compliment. Um, George, why don't you tell us, you know, tell us about the journey that your character goes on in this film, and, and then we'll uh, ask Zurich and Brian about, you know. My character evolves so much throughout, throughout the film because you feel like he's going one direction, but towards the end he goes another direction. Mm -hmm. I found myself in, in, the, in the moment, in the character so often in the film, I just kind of lost myself a little bit because I can relate so much and so well with the character. And Brian and Zerg, where do you guys fit into the story? Uh, Zerg, you, you, you play his longtime best friend, and Brian, you're someone who kind of comes in and threatens that friendship a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, the way Mike wrote it is um, I'm his new friend. I'm a car salesman. I get him into this new life, and he's trying to break away from the old life. But, um, I mean... The characters developed so well, and the script was just so awesomely written that, I mean, you couldn't go wrong with the relationship that we have. It's just so good to see on film, too. And Zurich? Um, my character was the character that was still in the streets, <laughs> still doing everything that uh, he probably shouldn't have been doing, and uh, going back, trying to pull my friend back, I guess, in my direction while he was trying to carry on and go on and, you know, start his life, get a job, girlfriend kids and you know he had responsibilities and I didn't I was still just running around the neighborhood so we start parting ways you know it wasn't that much in common too much but I wanted to hold on to our friendship because we had been friends for so long so that's that's where the movie's going you know most people can relate to that you know yeah. we grow older your friends start having kids their life take off you start parting ways one might not be doing nothing with itself. One is, and now you don't have too much in common. But I was jealous, wanted to hold on to my friend. He's getting new friends from work and stuff, and it was unusual. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good film to come see. And, Michael, how'd you settle on these three non-professional actors, which is a, a label I want to ask you guys about after. I think you kind of can see why I settled on him. <laughs> because the, the, the character Jack has his energy. Yeah. Once I saw him, it was like I had to go with him. And then with both of these guys, they could relate to the character so much. And I saw, each, each actor, I saw some of the character in them, so. You auditioned a lot of people for these roles? Yeah, yeah, we had, yeah, we did Okay. Uh, Spike, Spike and Michael, can you guys talk about um, how this movie's in black and white? I mean, I, I thought it was gorgeously shot, and it kind of recalled, she's got to have it, clerks, that kind of thing. Right. Strange and in Paradise. Ah, okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's exactly why. I mean, I wanted to, like, set my film apart from what's out now, I guess. Because mm -hmm. most, it's not a lot of black and white films out now, other than, yeah. So. And I just like black and white movies. And I just, it's a good contrast. And it's, I think this world would have, it's, it's good. I think it would have looked different in color. Yeah. Okay. So I, I mean, Spike, it seems, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, racial inequality, whether it's in the Academy at the Oscars or just in Hollywood in general. What's your sort of take on, on the state of things today? Do we, like, do we not... It's, I feel like we don't get enough black same. films. I mean, as I said before, it's like a 10-year cycle. Every 10 years, Hollywood discovers black talent, and then it's a nine-year drought, and then, uh, <laughs> then, then we get, then we get re rediscovered again. It's a cycle, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I mean, what, what do you guys feel like th that this film says about interracial friendships? 
it says a lot. I think it shows the reality of what's going on with interracial, <coughs> pardon me, friendships. Mm -hmm. It's more common in St. Louis to see friends like us than you might just think there would be, you know, because I grew up in a neighborhood where it's very diverse culturally, background-wise, and for us to show that, the, show that in the movie means a lot to me. You know, I want the world to see how we really mingle. Because I feel like together. most of the characters look at Brian's character with a bit of suspicion or whatever. He's this, this white boy coming into this world. This is St. Louis, though. He shows, represents St. Louis, mm -hmm. just like me, just like Jack. And it's a city I don't, we don't see a lot of on film. Uh, so never, yeah, I never. thought it was real. Right. right, of course.